high interest rates were supposed to be the thing that was actually going to be unhelpful to Bitcoin. Well, it, and I think on a relative basis, look what's happened to gold. It actually has been clearly it suppressed it. So you, you know that more likely than not, we're going to go into recession. There's some pretty clear cut recession trades. The easiest are the yield curve gets really steep. Term premium goes into the back ends of uh, of debt markets, right? Into into thirty year, ten year, and seven year paper. Uh, the stock market typically, right before re recession, declines about twelve percent. That's probably going to happen at some point, from some level. Uh, and you look at the big shorts in gold. More likely than not, in a recession. The market's typically really long assets like Bitcoin right. and gold. He said that this is the worst shape we've been in since World War II, meaning he believes that we were in worse shape during World War II than we are now. And he's wrong. We're in way worse shape now than we were uh, at the end of World War II. Because even though uh, we had run up a bunch of debt to fight that war, we had the capacity to pay it back. Uh, you know, w we had a, a very productive workforce. Uh, we were the world's wealthiest creditor nation. Uh, you know, we had trade surpluses. Uh, we had a lot of national wealth that could be tapped into and was tapped into uh, because during the war, taxes were raised significantly. Remember, before World War II started, nobody paid income taxes really except the very rich. Uh, there wasn't a withholding tax where people's uh, money came directly uh, out of their, their 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 paychecks, and there were a lot of other taxes that were added in 1943 as part of the victory tax to fund the war. Now, when the war ended, none of those taxes went away, and so the government had all this tax revenue after the hostilities stopped, and we demobilized 20 million soldiers. The government had all this revenue coming in from wartime taxes that were never repealed. And so we were able to pay back all of the debt that we incurred to finance the Second World War. That is not the situation that we're in today. We have no capacity to pay this debt. We have no extra tax revenue now. Uh, we didn't raise taxes really on anybody to fight the COVID war or the war on terror or any of these wars. We ran deficits. And now we have this huge interest expense that's rising rapidly, closing it on a trillion dollars a year, and then it's going to keep going on the debt we already have. And, you know, people don't have the capacity really to pay higher taxes the way they did, uh, you know, in, in the Second World War, because taxes were very low before the war started. <laughs> and even after the war, uh, you know, they were still on average lower than they are now. The problem is massive spending. We didn't have this bloated Social Security program. Social Security was very uh, new in 1945. It didn't even start until the 30s. There were very few people collecting it in 1945. You had lots of people paying the tax, but very few people getting the benefits. You didn't have Medicaid. You know, Medica uh, Medicare started, but again, it was a tiny expense uh, compared to what we have now. And of course, we have Obamacare in addition to Medicare and Medicaid. Medicaid didn't even come in until the 1960s. Um, so the government is in a far, far weaker position. It's not even close. Is so uh, Tudor Jones, he, he is so sugarcoating the degree of the problem. And, you know, the fact that he's one of the only guys out there, that was an interview on CNBC. He's one of the only people that comes on there that even says we have a problem. But even he isn't doing it the justice that it deserves because the problem is so much worse uh, than what he acknowledges. Yeah, and we'll, we'll be a much stronger nation after we're finished with the default <laughs> than we are now. We'll be in much better shape fiscally, right? If a, if there's a company that's bankrupt and they restructure and they get rid of a lot of debt at the under end of the process, they're they're in much better shape. So we're going to be in better shape after we do this. It's not just it, it's not just it's not just our creditors that we need to default on. We need to tell people on Social Security, on Medicare. A lot of people are not going to get that money. It's not going to happen. What is going to happen is nobody, everybody is going to get paid what they're owed, except it's not going to buy very much. So the bondholders are going to get their money. But when they go to buy stuff with it, they're not going to be able to get much. Right. So my way is honest. And 
our creditors end up with more purchasing power. My way. The way the government's going to do it, the dishonest way, creditors will lose even more. They're going to get their money back, but their money is not going to have any value when they get it or very little value. Right. So they're not going to cut your Social Security benefits. They're going to give you all the money. It's just that you're going to use it all up, uh, you know, you know, uh, you know, just, you know, with one bag of groceries. Right. Because it's not going to go very far is because the conventional wisdom is, is so flawed when it comes to the outlook for inflation. Uh, most people believe that 2% inflation uh, is around the corner. That, you know, maybe another quarter point hike, maybe a half a point, uh, you know, another year. And, you know, we're just going to be back at 2%. And then the Fed is just going to be able to cut rates and everything is going to go back to the way it was uh, in the last decade or two. And it, this is wrong. This is just not going to happen. You know, I, I heard this, you know, this fool on CNBC this morning, you know, saying that, look, you know, the Fed doesn't have anything to do with inflation. He said, look, you know, for years and years, the Fed was trying to get inflation to go up to 2% and all of its policies had no effect. You know, they were doing QE, they were doing 0% interest rates, and it had no effect on inflation. I mean, of course it did. That's why inflation is so high right now. It's because of what the Fed did to raise the inflation rate to 2% that it ultimately went so much higher than 2%. And it's why it's never going back down to 2% in the foreseeable future. It did have an effect. We're dealing with the effect now. It's just that there was a lag, right? It took a lot longer. Uh, and, and part of it was hidden by a, a CPI that understates by design the degree to which prices were going up. So all the years that the Fed claimed that prices were going up less than 2%, they actually were going up more. <laughs> it's just so, that the, the government numbers didn't, didn't reflect that. But um, get, getting back to, um, so the, the markets don't get this. So th they don't realize that they need an inflation hedge because they don't think there's any inflation to hedge. They trust the Fed. They think the Fed is going to take care of the problem. The Fed is not going to take care of the problem. The Fed created the problem, and it's going to make the problem worse. And so they should be buying gold, and eventually they will be buying gold. Now, whether some people buy Bitcoin instead of gold or in addition to gold, who knows, right? Some people might decide to do that, and that might push the price of Bitcoin up. I, I don't know. But even if it goes up, it won't stay up. Eventually, it's going to collapse. Today's video, Peter Schiff's bleak forecast anticipates a dire economic impact on both Bitcoin and gold. He envisions a scenario worse than the Great Depression. Schiff's concerns revolve around the volatility of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and their potential to destabilize traditional financial systems. Gold, historically considered a safe haven asset, is also affected as investors seek alternative options. While Schiff's predictions are dire, it's essential to consider a variety of expert opinions to gain a well-rounded perspective on the future of these assets. If you found this video helpful, make sure you hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.